Today we're going to be learning about how to manage money and, uh, and using a checking account. And so this is a, um, a skill that is totally necessary uh, to be an adult and to function in society. Rather than just an assignment you learn in school, try to focus on the fact that this is something you absolutely are going to have to know. So to begin, uh, we want to talk about why you would want a checking account. There's a lot of reasons why you might want a checking account. One reason is that your money is kept safe. Um, it's easy if you drop a $20 bill, there's no, one, there's no one to say that it was yours, it's gone forever. But if you put it in the bank account, um, it's going to be kept safe. Um, uh, another reason is that a record is kept of what you spent and what you earn. And this can be very important. Um, I can remember a time when my landlady wanted to give me my my deposit back and she said it was eight hundred dollars and I said no it was eight fifty and she didn't believe me and so I was able to go back into my account pull up the check print a copy of it and show it to her and she knew that that was how much I'd spent because I had a record if I'd paid her cash I wouldn't have been able to do that another reason is that you gain interest on the money you put in the bank so if I were to give one person ten dollars or two different people ten dollars and one of them puts it under their bed and the other one puts it in a bank account Ten years from now, the one that put it under their bed would still have $10, and the one that put it in their bank account, provided they never pulled it out or touched it, would have more than that because they would have been gaining interest on it over those ten years. So that's another reason why it's good to put it on a bank account. Uh, there are protections against fraud. If someone mugs you in the street and steals your money, there's really not a whole lot you can do about it. But if someone hacks into your account and steals from you, um, the bank will investigate it and they will not make you pay that. So there are some protections there. Okay, a couple of rules to when you use a checking account. First of all, only write a check if you have enough money in your account to cover it. Uh, when you don't do that, when you write it, when you overdraw your account, it's called bouncing a check. Okay, and so bouncing a check can cause them to charge you a lot of money in fees, and uh, and then nobody will be able to cash any checks. So if you bounce a check and there's a there's a negative balance in your bank account, if somebody goes to spend uh, cash a check you gave them, or you try to use your write a check or use a debit card it will not go through and you'll not be allowed um, to spend any money. Number two, write your checks legibly. Make sure you have good handwriting so that people can read it. Uh, write the amount as far to the left as possible. So you want to make sure that you push it all the way close to the dollar sign and not leave room for other numbers to be added. Always use a pen. Okay, Writing a check in pencil is just, well, really stupid. <laughs> write it in a pen so it can't be changed or at least not changed as easily. Don't sign a blank check, okay? So can this check be cashed? It has everything filled out except the signature, and the answer is no, it cannot, okay? But this check has nothing but a signature, and yes, it can be cashed. If you leave this line around, somebody can pick it up and fill it out and cash it for however much they want. So don't leave blank checks lying around that are signed. Print the right date on your checks. You can post date a check if you like, um, saying don't cash this until this date, but it's kind of not a good idea because what if they do anyway so best to write the correct date keep your checks in a safe place um, they have your your account information on it and stuff you don't want just anybody to have access to that if you write a check and then you need to void it either because it you know you messed up writing it or you no longer need to use it or whatever make sure you write the word void on it and then rip it up and throw it away record every transaction in your register this is a check register and it comes with your checkbook um, maybe you've seen people do that before they'll write a check and then they flip to the front of their checkbook and they write it down now granted this is kind of old school a lot of people don't actually keep a, a record a register on them anymore now that we have computers and stuff personally I use a computer program to do it but it's still a great idea so that you don't forget um, some of the things that you've done so you want to keep a running balance on your register so it would look something like this where you say okay this is how much I have and then I deposited my paycheck and then I added that up and then take money out and you know so that you always know exactly how much you have in your bank account at all times um, when you have a checking account there are two entities that keep track of what you spend you and the bank okay and so balancing your checkbook means that you go through and you look at your record this register is your record and you look at the bank's record and you check it off to say okay yes the bank knew about that I knew about that um, oftentimes most of the time they're not gonna match either because the bank will list something that you don't have on your list which is usually because you forgot to write it down um, or you'll list something the bank doesn't know about which is usually because someone didn't cash a check yet you write a check to somebody they haven't cashed it yet so the bank's not gonna know about it until they cash it 
All right, we're going to go through the actual steps of writing a check now. First of all, uh, date the check. Generally, you don't want to post date it in case you have, do not have the funds to cover it, so you're going to put the date there. Number two, you're going to write the name of the person or place that you are giving the money to. If it's a person, use a first and last name. Okay, if you're going to like the mall, and you, you would not write the check to the mall, you would write it to the store within the mall. Sometimes you're, if you're not sure, you just want to ask, who do I make this check out to? In dollars and cents, write the amount of the check, staying close to the dollar sign. And then the fun part, you get to spell it out, okay? 21 and 67 over 100, okay? The zero over 100 format for the cents. Um, it makes it a little harder to write your check. It's harder to erase that much ink when they spell it out. Um, and then you draw a line to the end, okay? Sign your name in cursive, okay? Using... Um, you want to use a signature that's the same every time. So if you haven't like sat down and like figured out how to sign your name like you know over and over again, you may want to do that so you get kind of your set signature. It should be in cursive or at least a form of cursive if you're not very good at cursive just because it's faster to write it and it's a lot harder to copy. And after the word for, you can list what the check is for. This is the one part of the check that is not required. Personally, I don't actually use it very much. Uh, but some people use it religiously. Um, but it can be very useful if you want to explain why you're getting the check. Um, personally, I received a check the other day that was for a donation for our play program at the school. And I was taking it to the main office to get deposited. And luckily, they had written in here, play program. So when I handed it to our secretary, she knew which account to put it in because it was in the four account. So that's one example of when it can be very useful. Okay, down here we've got different numbers on the check. Uh, the account number, if you have like, like a checking account and like three savings accounts, each one of them is gonna have a different account number. Then you have your routing number, which is the number of your bank. And there will come a time in your life where they're gonna ask you for your routing number, okay? You need to know your routing if you, number if you wanna have your paychecks direct deposited, or if you want to pay your bills online straight out of your bank, your checking account, which honestly, I pay every bill that way. So routing number will become important. And then this is your check number. So this is check 101, and then it works its way up. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get into the Excel portion of this assignment. When you open up this checking assignment, you're going to see this page. Go ahead and type your name in here and your period. And you'll notice it changes colors, okay? And now we're going to go ahead and figure out uh, how to write checks. You'll notice you have points here. Right now you have zeros, okay? And as you complete this, they will automatically fill in. Now. Granted, most of the time when you write checks, you do it by hand, but we're going to do it in Excel because it will automatically grade it and let you know where you're at. So you'll get automatic feedback as to know whether you did it right. So I'm going to go to checks over here, scroll up here, and your name will already be there. You'll notice it, it appears right here at the check. So make sure that you capitalized your name up here, first of all, because you always should be capitalizing your name, and second of all, because then it'll do your signature capitalized. Okay, and then it get, tells us exactly what to do. On August 1st, you purchase tickets in a concert at Art Ticks for 200 bucks, and it's check 101. So here's check 101. I'm going to put the date, and I suggest you just do 8 forward slash 1. Use your 10 key if you can, and if you do it right, it will turn green, and it will format it for you. Make sure you don't do today's date. You want to do August 1st, okay? Pay to the order of Art Ticks. You don't have to capitalize it. Um, to get it right, but one thing you want to double check is if you put a space there by accident, it will think it's wrong, okay? So if you're like, I totally did that right, why isn't it working? It might be you have a space. Just double click on it and you can backspace to get rid of that extra space. And then I have my amount, which is uh, 200. And now I have to spell it out. 200 and as 0 over 100, okay? And that's how I spell it out. I got it correct. And then memo, you do have to do a memo for it to count it. So I'm going to put tickets. That's what I bought it for. And once I've done it right, I get 2 out of uh, 12. So I've got my first two points. Okay. Now I'm going to go down to the next one. And I'm not going to do them all, but I do want to show you just how to spell them out because I do get a lot of confusion in that when I teach this lesson. So for the 945, you would put your dollars on one side and your cents on the other. So 9. And then to separate them, you have an and. You don't type 9 dollars. Don't do the word dollars because it's right here. 9 and, and then this would be 45 over 100, okay? A lot of kids get confused about when you would do a, a dash. You do a dash if it's a double-digit number, and it's not, an, it's, a, it's above the teens, okay? So for in this case, it would be 4T dash 5 and uh, 68 over 100, 
Okay, so make sure you get those correct. If once you have them all done, you should have 12 points. All right, for the register, um, it looks like this. And you'll notice you have several columns. Okay, we're gonna go through how to, to write a register. And this is where you're keeping track of what you, what checks in, you've written. Not just checks you've written, but deposits, debit, you know, ATM withdrawals, whatever it might be. So number one, write the check number in this space, okay? Uh, you can also write DEB for debit and DEP for deposit, or just leave it blank. It, that's kind of, I don't know, I've never found that there's an actual set rule on that. Um, in the assignment, just leave it blank. Personally, I write DEP or DEB, but it's up to you. Um, then you're going to enter the date in the spot where the date is asked for. And then you write the check who it's for. And it's the same check we just did. You know, you put the person's name in the description of transaction why you wrote the check. Okay, now if you are spending money, either by check, ATM withdrawal, or a debit, you're going to put it in the payment column. Okay, if you're making a deposit, it goes in the deposit column like that okay then you're gonna write your balance okay your balance so this is where my balance is right here number six and that's what I started with and then I'm gonna go through and subtract okay so I had 675 I spent $21 so I'm gonna take subtract that and I get 653 and then I'm gonna add 150 because that was my deposit so I'm keeping a running balance over here showing what I have okay it's very important so that you know how much is in your account so you don't bounce your checks. Y if you rely completely on the bank, you might look up and say, oh, wow, I've got $500 in there, but you forgot that you wrote a check to somebody and they didn't cash it yet. Or maybe you've got money in there that's just spoken for. You haven't written the check yet, but you're going to. It's for bills that are coming up. And so even though the bank says you have it, you know you don't. So if you write it out of your deposit already, like let's say you don't owe something until the first, but you write the check and you put it in your register and you act like you've already taken it out, even if you haven't handed the check to them, as far as you're concerned, it's already spent. But the bank won't show that until they, they cash their check. All right, let's move on to the register section. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. Down here, you've got 12 different transactions. You're gonna type them in up here. So we're gonna start with a balance. It says August 1st, you made a deposit of 350. So the date is August 1st. And my balance is right here. I'm going to type 350. And it turns green. I know I got it right. I got my two points. That's the easy one. OK, this next one says, August 1st, I purchased tickets to a concert for $200. So I'm going to do, um, this is check 101. And this is those art ticks ones that we already did. OK. Now, because we're taking money out of our account, it's going to go in the payment column. So I'm going to type 200 here. Okay, and then I'm going to come back to this in just a second. I just want to show you a couple more just really fast, and then we'll do the balance all at once. Okay, now this one I wanted to show you. This is a deposit, and so um, deposits are a little different. So I'm going to do the word. You don't have to do anything over here, and then the date is 5 August, and you're going to do a deposit for, I just type in paycheck. Okay, so whatever's in the bold, you're going to do that. Now, because we're putting money in our account, it's going to come over here. But it doesn't tell you how much. It just says you worked 42 hours at 11.75 an hour. So you can do the math really quickly, or you can come over here. It was uh, 11.75 and 42 hours. Now, granted, they would take taxes out, but we're not going to get that picky at this moment. But So it's 493.50. So I'm going to come over here and in the deposit column, 493.50. Okay, so I still don't have my, I still have frowny faces in here because I haven't done the math over here. So you could get out a calculator and do equals whatever, but Excel is a calculator. So you can do it right inside Excel. So I'm going to do a quick little lesson on doing math in Excel. This is incredibly useful, so pay attention. Uh, I'm going to type equal sign. Equal sign is how you tell Excel that you're doing a math problem and you're not just typing in pretty numbers. And I could just type in 350 minus, minus 200. Okay. You can just do it like a regular math problem and it will answer it for you. But I don't want you to do it that way. I want you to do it algebraically, okay? which means you're going to use variables. That may sound scary and make you think, you know, what does that mean? But really, it's quite simple. Instead of typing in 350, I'm going to click on the box. Okay? And then I'm going to do minus, and then I'm going to click on the box, and I press enter. Now, although I get the same answer, it is not the same problem. Okay, there is only one math, there's only one answer to the math problem, 350 minus 200. It's always going to be 150 every time. But if the math problem is G7 minus E8, it could literally be anything. If I change 350 to 250, it will automatically update it and change it because it's really saying what the whatever's in this box minus whatever's in this box. Okay, it's a much more efficient way to do it and a more accurate way to do it. Okay, so we're going to keep doing equals this 
minus that, okay? And then this final one equals my new total, make sure you're not going back here, my new total, plus, because this is a deposit, this. And now I get my smiley face. Get all 12 of them done, and when you finish, you should have 36 out of 36. You can go ahead and print. Uh, just FYI, if you try to print this page or this page, you're not supposed to print it. If you do, it, you'll just get a blank page coming out of the printer. So if you, if you keep printing and nothing's happening, it's probably because you're printing the wrong page. Make sure you go to score sheet and print that. If you are doing this at home, you can email the file to me or you can print it at home and bring it in. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you learned a lot about writing checks.